first station, Jesus is condemned to death. In Jesus' trial, Pontius Pilate does not believe he is guilty. In Mark chapter 15, verses 12 through 14, it says, Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. After hearing their resistance, Pilate agreed with the crowd. In our world today, many times innocent people are sentenced to death. In some cases, this occurs due to any errors made in the justice system, but another way to think about it um, is knowing that thousands of innocent Christians die every year just because of their faith. Oftentimes, without even realizing it, we condemn people in our everyday lives. Many times we are quick to judge others based on their appearance, actions, or even their social status. Maybe we do this because of a fear of standing out, or maybe it's because we don't want to disagree with the majority. However, it's important for us to remember that we are condemning Jesus every time we judge others, but he will let us go free if we say yes to his mercy. Through the realization that we too are condemned to die one day, then we should live every day as precious with his gifts and graces. Station 2, Jesus Accepts His Cross The cross was a symbol of humiliation and suffering at the time. We can only imagine the suffering he felt by carrying that cross. We can only imagine the chafing and the exhaustion he may have felt by simply putting one foot in front of the other. He knew what he was accepting, the burdens of all that was to come with this task. This was a commitment that taught us the cost of a holy life. When Jesus accepted his cross, he took this on to end the situation for himself and for us. It's by all means not easy task to choose this life. It wasn't an easy decision in the first place, but by choosing to see this through, through hardships, questions, criticisms, and doubts is when it really counts. It's something we should think about often we need to ask ourselves, will we take up our own cross? And are we putting one foot in front of the other to get there? The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. The cross that Jesus has been carrying is incredibly heavy. During this station, Jesus falls for the first time. He became so weak and was ready to faint. Even, if after, even after this fall, nobody wanted to help Jesus. The soldiers are eager to go home, so they push him around and yell at him to get back up and keep moving. What I think is most important about this station is that Jesus just got back from being physically punished by the Roman guards, and he still has to carry a wooden cross so heavy that it makes him fall. Yet he still manages to get back up and keep walking. As a child or as a teen, I tend to look at what I have to do, try to do it, then get tired of it, and then simply give up and decide not to do it. I give up or just get through things without putting much effort into them, just to be done with them. As an adult, sometimes we can put things off too. We can give up so easily, and sometimes don't do our work as well as we probably could. So now let me ask you a question. Can you recall a time in your life when, like Jesus, you have fallen from sheer fatigue and weakness? My Jesus, the heavy burden of my sins is on you, and it bursts you down under the cross. I detest those sins. 
I ask for your forgiveness and the strength to follow your steps and be able to get back up just like you did. station, Jesus meets his mother. In this station, Jesus feels alone. He's walking through the crowds and he doesn't feel safe. He needs a friendly face to show him that he's not alone and his eyes land on Mary, his mother. In times of desperation and need, we often look for those that are there for us whenever we need them. Jesus is hurting and lost here and he needs comfort. Mary is that source of comfort for him, and this station reminds us of Mary's love for us. Jesus loves Mary, and Mary loves Jesus with all of her heart. This station reminds us that we should love others as deeply as Mary loved Jesus, and especially in times of need, we should look to care for those we love and those that love us. Station. Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry the cross. Jesus, you have already suffered so much, and you still have so far to go. You have been mocked, beaten, humiliated. You can't even carry the cross on your own right now. You are paraded around in your brokenness, and now you are dependent on the help of another. You, Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, are forced to rely on someone else. What is it like to be so powerful and yet so vulnerable? In my life, I struggle to let others see me in my weakness. The thought of leaning on the shoulder of another, opening up, letting them see my scars and my flaws, it makes me feel exposed. Small, ugly, helpless. In the Gospel of Matthew, you tell us that if we are to follow you, we must pick up crosses of our own. You tell me to pick up my cross, but you don't tell me to do it by myself. You didn't do it by yourself. You accepted the burden and the human need for the help of others that came with it. And just as Simon helped you, you help me. You don't stand on the sidelines watching me struggle under the weight of a suffering that is so much larger than me. You are here with me, under the weight of my cross, guiding me along the way. Help me remember, I can't do this alone. I don't do this alone. Who in your life has turned to you in times of need? And how have you responded? sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. In this moment of time, Jesus, bloodied and bruised, stumbles on his path to Golgotha. Veronica, a loyal follower, wiped his face with, his, with her veil and in return receives a holy image of the Savior's face. Jesus is able to take such small and simple sacrifices and transform them into something much greater because he loves his children so much. We can consider this as we come to our final days of Lent. What will our sacrifices during the season be transformed into? What has Jesus made of them? 
Veronica, when stepping out into Christ's path, risked severe punishment just to show Christ one final time how much she loves and adores him. In our own lives, when we see brothers and sisters struggling, we must ask ourselves, in what way can we help or share the unconditional love of Christ with them? As Christians, we are called to share acts of kindness, no matter the circumstance or possible consequence. Blessed are the pure in heart, the Lord had said in the Sermon on the Mount, for they shall see God. station, Jesus falls for the second time. Here we see Jesus falter and fall again. Even with the help of Simon, the weight is too much and he stumbles. But it's not the weight of the cross that makes Jesus fall. It's the weight of our sins, our failures, and our shortcomings that make Christ fall into the rough stones as, as the guards yell at him and whip him to get him back up. May this be a reminder to always persevere and to always get back up. As women, we are sometimes overlooked in the crowd, but Jesus knows your self-worth and dignity. Jesus came up to the women to comfort them in the time of struggle, demonstrating selflessness and love in a world obsessed with one's own image. Lord, help us to think about others in the difficult situations those around us might be. Although Jesus was hurting and offering himself up for his children, he had enough time to think and care for everyone around him showing mercy to a world who did not want his love. The Ninth Station Jesus falls for the third time. Towards the end, Jesus falls for the third time, but he doesn't stay on the ground. He gets up once again and keeps going till the end. He trusts in the Lord to give him the strength to persevere. The Lord will give us strength as well when we feel weak. He will help us hold on just as he did for Jesus. He will be there with us. gives a man his social position. It gives him his place in society. It makes him someone. Jesus having his clothes stripped has the meaning of that he is no longer anything at all. He is simply an outcast. The moment of the stripping reminds me of God's splendor of falling away from man, who now stands naked and exposed, unclad and ashamed. And so Jesus, once more, takes on the condition of fallen men, stripped of his garments. He reminds us that we have all lost the first garment. That is God's splendor. At the foot of the cross, the soldiers draw lots to divide his paltry possessions, his clothing. Nothing is mere coincidence. Everything that happens is contained in the word of God and sustained by his divine plan. Let us not forget that John says that lots were drawn from Jesus' tunics, woven without seam from top to bottom. We may consider this as a reference to the high priest robes, which was woven from a single thread, without stitching, for he, the crucified one, is the true high priest.
Jesus is nailed to the cross. Luke chapter 23 verses 33 and 34. When they reached a place called the Skull, they crucified him there, and the two and two criminals also, one on the right and one on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. When nails went through your hands and feet, you remained silent. How could you stay silent while going through immense pain? You were defenseless during this time, but still put faith in your Father. You loved the others around you, even though they were condemning you. Show me, Lord, how I can endure my burdens and walk with you. St. Francis once said, It is only in giving to others that we will receive. Jesus, you gave up your life. But since I I am unable to do great things, let me do small things with great love. Station. Jesus dies on the cross. As Jesus died on the cross, his sacrifice was completed. The mission that he was sent to earth to accomplish was fulfilled, and humanity was saved. Even in death, Jesus' last action was an action of mercy. As Jesus received the drink on the cross, he uttered the words, It is finished, therefore signifying our redemption through him. That day, as Jesus bowed his head for the last time, and gave his spirit to the Father, our salvation was won for us. I dreamed one day that I'd be named a king's most precious rose. One day a soldier bent me over, tore me from my bed. Station 13, Jesus is removed from the cross. After Jesus' death, his mother Mary and his disciples were filled with grief at the death of their savior and friend. The pain that you endure watching a loved one suffer, as Jesus did, would have been enough to bring any soul into despair. As Jesus was taken off the cross, the people around him could have gotten lost in self-pity and loathing. They could have sought vengeance for actions taken against their Lord. Instead, in the midst of their hopelessness and grief, they were overwhelmed with love. As those around us suffer and die, it is up to us to choose to look through the intense grief and shock that overwhelms us and be comforted and trusting that no matter what happens, our loved ones are under the Lord's control. And no matter how lost we may feel, God is with us. A purple garment hid the torment none but I could see. They mocked and laughed, gave him a staff, and bowed on bended knee. They bent me round and wove a crown, and place me on his head my pad station 14 jesus is laid in the tomb when jesus was crucified he was not meant to be buried because to them he was a criminal undeserving of that human decency however because of the courage shown by joseph jesus was able to be prepared and buried in the tomb our relationship with jesus is a two-way street Jesus loves all of us so much that he was willing to carry all of our sins and burdens on the cross with him. Joseph understood the great sacrifice Jesus made and fought for him to get the proper burial. As Catholics, we are called to fight for the relationship we want with Jesus. The road to that relationship will not always be easy. Just like how Joseph prepared Jesus' body, it will require love and care, and sometimes a little courage. But in the end, it is worth it, because we get to spend an eternity with Jesus.
straw Anointed by John's hand Transfigured on a mountain dawn Now wore a man In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit Lord Jesus, you have given us the ultimate gift you sacrificed yourself on the cross so that we may live with you in paradise. You show us an unending love. Help us to do the same. Teach us to pick up our own crosses and follow you in times of distress and in times of great joy. Lord, thank you for giving yourself for us. Thank you for teaching us forgiveness and love by dying on the cross. We are filled with joy and gratitude to know that we will one day be united with you in eternal life. In your name we pray, amen. To let our thorns and all that scorns be healed within his temple.